Move over, LMR 400. There's a new kid in town, and his name is KMR 400. This time on KMRD Radio Stuff. So those of you without a sense of humor, that was a joke, but sort of. This is actually called KMR 400. Thanks to Josh over at Ham Radio Crash Course for running his Black Friday deals. I picked this up for $58 for 75 feet on Amazon. It actually has really good reviews. Initially just holding it, I'm actually pretty impressed. These connectors are no joke. And uh, I want to take a look at it. It's supposed to be a solid copper clad aluminum center conductor with a foil and a tinned uh, copper braid. So it should have good shielding and it should be just like the regular thing, right? It's made in China, it's gotta be good. So I'm gonna cut this open. We're gonna take a look at the connector. We're gonna take a look at the insides and see if Amazon cable is actually as good as they advertise it. <laughs> I can almost say that with a straight face. So let's hop on the bench and get to getting. So I wanna test this coax a few different ways. But the first thing I wanna test is simply how long it is and did we actually get the length. Now I can't find any documentation from the manufacturer of this as to, as to like velocity factor and stuff. So I'm just going by what Times Microwave rates their LMR 400 at, which is an 84 velocity factor. So uh, we're measuring 74.1 feet. So not quite the 75 feet we paid for, but we'll go ahead and let that slide for now. Next, I wanna check its actual performance in terms of losses or attenuation that we would measure on coaxial cable. So I got the 7300 out into a watt meter and into a dummy load. I'm just gonna take some preliminary tests and get a control for what the power output is, just basically reading it from the back of the radio and into the uh, watt meter here. And then I'll go ahead and swap out this Messi and Poloni Hyperflex 10 Sahara for the 75 foot run of KMR 400 and we'll compare that to what Times Microwave says LMR 400 should get and we'll see what kind of uh, losses we get with this coax. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've done here. I created a spreadsheet. Here's all our frequencies in megahertz. And I went ahead and measured basically at the radio's output for all of the frequencies and recorded the power that I got. Now, I went to Times Microwave and used their specifications. So basically what this is saying, for at four megahertz with a 74.1 foot run of LMR 400, we should be 95.9% .9 efficient, meaning if I have 103.5 watts at the output of the radio, at the end of that 74.1 feet of coax, I should see 108.85 uh, watts still there. So we should be very efficient. Now in this column, I'm gonna go ahead and run the test with the coaxial cable in line, and I'm gonna put the measurements here of what we actually get at the end of the cable, and then these will tabulate our results and we'll get some uh, things going on down here. Then we'll go ahead and cut it open and look at it. All right, well, let's tabulate our results. Here we have the power measured here, and we can see at four megahertz and 10 megahertz, we were only off about 3% from what uh, we were supposed to, but every other frequency was just way bad. On average, we're 5.4% uh, less efficient than what uh, times microwave specs for LMR 400, which is what we're basing this KMR 400 off of. So not quite as good. The only information I could find on this KMR 400, if we look at the Amazon page here, they've got this spreadsheet. And if we take a look at the 75 footer on 50 megahertz, we can see, I'm gonna guess this is dBs of attenuation. We should be getting 0.6 dB of attenuation at 50 megahertz. Well, by my math, if 50 watts is 3 dB basically, that would mean for every 16.6 uh, watts, we're losing a dB. Well, we've lost 19 watts here, so that's well over the 0.6 dBs that they're saying uh, we should have for loss. And just for fun, I compared it to some ABR LMR 400 Ultraflex, a 103 foot run, and uh, we're pretty much right in line with uh, being 25 feet longer and being a stranded center versus a solid center. The KMR is a solid center, where the LMR is a stranded center. Solids are always gonna do better than uh, stranded, but we're still pretty much right in line there with the KMR 400, even with uh, 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 really 20, uh, 28 feet longer of a cable. And then I compared it to the Hyperflex 10 Sahara from Messi and Poloni. And again, we're uh, 
pretty much beating it in every single area other than uh, 50 megahertz here. Uh, but again, a longer uh, cable, 25, 26 feet longer cable, and it's doing the same darn thing. So KMR 400 is not quite living up to what it should be. Now, it's not horrible, mind you, but I would not expect this to perform as well as a good name brand LMR 400 type cable. So let's say we cut this open and see what's on the inside. Gosh, I almost hate to do this. These connectors look really good. So hopefully I'll be able to salvage this at the end and put these back on. So we're going to cut off this heat shrink here. Try not to nick the jacket. This nice glue lined heat shrink on there. I mean, look at that connector. That's similar to an Evo connector from Messi and Poloni. That is a beast of a connector. Now let's take that off. So we've got, let's see here. Yeah, we've got our washer. We've got a little gasket to prevent water. It's a nice freaking connector. Although it looks like this is crimped on and not soldered on. Well, after some research, I found out that these are called clamp connectors and they are a crimp on So not to worry, we'll just cut it off. Voila. Now let's see what's inside of this thing. So we have a copper clad aluminum center conductor. We have uh, a pretty decently wound uh, and tight braid, as well as our foil shield. So very well shielded. I mean, this looks pretty darn legit. Aside from the performance, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed for, for the price you get. That's not so bad. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but it appears we have a gas injected center dielectric. So that's good. We want to see some air in there. That's not terrible. So there we have it guys, a first look at KMR 400 from Amazon. Honestly, I'm not as disappointed in this coax as I thought I was going to be. The connectors I think are fantastic. Uh, ultimately, the losses are a little bit higher than what I would have expected. But for the price, not a bad cable. You, let me know what you guys think. Is it worth the $58 that I paid for 75 feet of this? Or uh, would you rather just save your pennies and get something uh, a little better like a Messi and Poloni or an ABR cable or a Times Microwave? Let me know in the comments, guys. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at KNMRD, and we'll see you again on another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.